Today, one in nine women in the UK develops breast cancer. This video looks at the clinical anatomy of the breast and provides you with anatomically based knowledge in order to reach a correct diagnosis. Your learning objectives are refresh your knowledge of the anatomy of the breast, understand the likely pathologies arising in the breast, the contribution of anatomy and pathology for determining the modern treatment of breast cancer. The breast is a soft hemispherical organ lying in the superficial fascia of the anterior thoracic wall between the second and sixth ribs. Breast lumps may be classified as being physiological, benign and malignant. Between the base of the breast and the underlying fascia is the retromammary space which allows the breast some movement. Medially, the breast is adjacent to the lateral border of the sternum and laterally it extends as the axillary tail along the border of pectoralis major. The breast is composed of 15 to 20 milk secreting lobules, each drained by its own lactiferous duct. It is subdivided into lobules by the suspensory ligaments of Cooper which originate as fibrous bands from the superficial fascia. The nipple is surrounded by a circular pigmented area, the areola, which contains sebaceous glands called the tubercles of Montgomery. Clinically, the breast may be divided into four quadrants, useful in describing the location of lumps. Benign lumps arising from the connective tissues include fibroadenomas, lipomas, and sebaceous cysts, or areas of fat necrosis following trauma. Malignant lumps are usually hard, irregular, tethered to their surroundings, and may be associated with axillary lymphadenopathy. Roughly 90% of breast cancers arise from the epithelium of the ducts, and 10% from the lobules. Breast cysts are tender, smooth, fluctuant, and occur with increasing frequency as the perimenopausal period approaches. Fibroadenomas, or breast mouse, are solid, well-defined, and at palpation, run away from your fingers. They arise from fibrous and glandular tissue and have a minimal risk of becoming malignant. The breast's arterial supply is derived from branches of the subclavian and axillary arteries. Laterally, it is supplied by the lateral thoracic and acromiothoracic arteries. Medially, it is supplied by the perforating and anterior intercostal branches of the internal thoracic artery. Breast surgery may sometimes damage these, leading to poor wound healing. 75% of breast lymph drains laterally to the axillary lymph nodes, which are arranged in five clusters, anterior, posterior, lateral, central and apical groups. Superiorly, these nodes drain to the infraclavicular and lower cervical nodes. Inferior lymphatics drain via the internal thoracic chain to the diaphragm and anterior abdomen, and medially to the parasternal nodes which may cross the midline and involve the other breast. Some of these nodes are often the first sites of cancer spread. Surgical excision of suspicious breast lumps may involve sentinel, selective or total removal of axillary lymph nodes. This may lead to swelling of the arm known as lymphedema. If the breast skin becomes edematous due to lymphatic blockage, this may give rise to a classical peau d'orange or orange skin appearance. Axillary surgery may also lead to damage of the long thoracic nerve, causing paralysis of the serratus anterior muscle and consequent winging of the scapula. Breast screening with regular mammography in women over 50 aims for early identification of breast lumps which are further investigated with triple assessment method consisting of clinical examination, fine needle aspiration cytology and breast imaging using ultrasound 
or mammography. In summary, examination of breast lumps, backed up by strong anatomical knowledge, will lead to correct diagnosis and alleviate patient anxiety.